Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Carlson Young about the Blazing World, which is going to be available in theaters October 15th. Thank you so much for doing this. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's exciting. I mean, I love the film. I have so many questions, so we're going to have to kind of get into it right away. But it's exciting. You wore many hats on this project. You starred in it. You directed it. You wrote it. Um, did you always know at one point for all your career that you were going to do all of it, basically, and not just act? I had this idea that I would get to a place as an actor where I could make that transition. Yep. Um, and then just got bad, sort of around age 26, 27 was like, I'm not willing to wait for that perfect moment. I don't think that that exists really. So, um, so I just sort of focused in on the story that I, that was really dear to my heart that I wanted to chase to the fullest extent. Absolutely. One of the things I love about this film the most is how it's blending so many genres into one. I think mm -hmm. you're smiling because I, I feel like people bring that up all the time. But like, I, I just love that because it's showing that content doesn't have to be put in, like the TV and film does not have to be put in a box anymore. I, I don't think so. I, yeah. I don't think it Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Was that kind of a mindset as well that you were hoping to do with this film? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I, I pulled inspiration from all over the place, um, you know, and I, I love horror and genre and fantasy you know, in general. And I really wanted this to be just a delicious soup of everything that inspires me creatively. But also, I mean, there's, you know, I mean, it, it's definitely a story about mental health and grief and depression and but but sort of filtering that through a psychological horror fantasy and and kind of taking the inner child on that journey. Um, and I thought that that was the space that I wanted to explore. So was there something when you were making this film that, because like you said, it's, it's packed. There's so much in it. Was there something specifically that you really wanted to put it on, whether it was the focus on mental health, whether it was the aesthetic, like, is there one thing when this, when it's set in stone that you're making this movie that like had to be put in there, like no matter what. Udo Kier. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay. <laughs> I love it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yes. Udo represents just as a human being, he's everything that inspires me about art. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's worked with some of my favorite filmmakers of all time. And artistically, um, he his entire life has is like such a beacon of hope and and light for me that I wanted him to be the focal point of this film to extract this trauma out of myself as a filmmaker really so there was a lot of um there was a lot of blurring there between the the, the character and me and finding finding where those lines were and um it was it was really interesting and a shout out to the cinematographers and director of photography for this because it just looks so uh, he, good it's so shane good kelly. <laughs> shane <laughs> kelly bless you he, he just he just slayed it and and you know we conceptualized for you know a minute about what everything would look like and same with our production designer ronnie becker it was it was a very collaborative experience and um you know we shot it in a proper quarantine camp so yeah. we had no, nothing else to do except for this so it was really unique i find it interesting because obviously you know they're saying we're in like the golden age of television and content and film right now and i find it interesting because a lot of people talk about like the writing right the actual story how effective it is and 100 percent, i agree like some of the things coming out are amazing but i feel like for me it's a tug of war between like the aesthetic like i just it just blows my mind how amazing everything's looking these days but also the global access, the fact that content is so accessible like all over the world. Do you have a specific thing that you think is kind of the big reason why we're in the golden age of content right now out of the three I just mentioned? Is it a uh, tie? I do, you know, I think you're, like you said, it's the access. Yeah. I think that people 
who may never have had an entry into the industry or, um, yeah, I mean, you know, everybody has a camera on their phone and is able to sort of craft an aesthetic around their world, whether that's through social media or just their photography on their iPhone, you know? So everybody is sort of able to curate their aesthetic. It, it's so true. And I kind of want to go through a little bit of like a tour of your experiences working on this film, because I did mention you're in it, you wrote it, and you directed it. So could you go through each of them, and you could start with either one, about your kind of experiences and challenges challenges with each hat you were wearing on this project? Because I find that very interesting, because they're all different, and your experience might have been different with all of them. Yeah, they, I mean, they're all different hats, and they're very different jobs. The writing process was a very emotional extraction mm -hmm. um and then the acting process was a very emotional extraction too and then the directing was about the edit and about um you know really confine like like harnessing the energy of all of those things yeah so reeling it all in and yeah i mean it just, it had to, I had to do all of this. I had to do all of that. But is it kind of with everything too, where, you know, a lot of people recognize you from a lot of past projects and, you know, you're directing and, and writing and you're going behind the camera and people are usually, uh, people see you usually like, in, in something rather than behind. And I find it interesting too, because, you know, for me as a content creator and everything, you're always, you want to do as much as you can, but sometimes it's not, it's going to be tough. Like sometimes it's going to be tough. Like it's going to happen, right? Like it's not going to be like comfortable sometimes getting used to everything. No, no, no. It's, it's uncomfortable. It's actually profoundly uncomfortable. And I think there's things that, you know, you can do, you can do, you can wear multiple hats. And then there are things that you allocate to people who are far better than you at doing those things. So, you know, for this, for this uh, film, I was very, um, you know, I really felt it was natural to play Margaret to be the actor um, because it was, you know, the story was very, it, there was, it was, it was, it was a personal, but also universal story, but I just, I, I look back and I'm not even sure how I would have articulated some of the nuances to an actress. So I sort of was like, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm going to, for, for this one, I'm going to play Margaret. Um, and, you know, with, and with my DP and production designer, it it was very much let's prep this to high heaven. And yep. so we can all flex those creative muscles that we get, we can all do what we're best at on the day. If you look at everything that Carlson Young has done in her career so far, you look at this project specifically as well. You look at all the different things you've done in the past, whether it's Scream, a lot of the stuff you've done with like in the comedy, like Key and Peele, your Disney Channel. You've done a lot of different projects. You're doing a lot of different projects. Obviously, you go where the opportunities are as an actor, as a storyteller. But do you look back and and think about the fact that you you're you have been able to work on a diverse amount of amazing projects at different genres? I mean, that's pretty exciting to look at that a little bit. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it is. It is. I mean, it's, it is, I get, you know, <laughs> I guess if you do look at it all, like listed out, it's really diverse and like, you're like, wait, what? Um, and then you, you know, you're right. I just, I, I have always gone where the opportunity is the opportunity being what somebody else will let me do yep. or what, what somebody else sees that I can do. And it's never, that's never embodied me as an artist. Yeah. It, I, you know, like it's very fun to pop in and do comedy. I love comedy. I love to do comedy as an actress. Um, but pulling back from that and, and really understanding what my identity is as a filmmaker and as an artist has been a completely different experience and ultimately the one that I'm most excited about. So, yeah. And the thing you mentioned too about the access, I mean, a lot of the projects you have worked on in comedy as well, like don't really have a shelf life. Like they're always going to be there. <laughs> like key and peel and even going back to like as the bell rings, like they're always going to be there. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. <laughs> very true it's a good point i don't think it's a bad i love like substitute teacher key appeals great I mean, but i yeah. feel like it, it's always no, I mean, like, around it, 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 
utter privilege to be a part of those things, you know? Um, and I, I'm just, I'm grateful to have, to have had those experience and experiences. And I, and I also, you know, they prepared me so much as a director, like working on scream and yeah, I was just about to mention that yeah. and, and being able to, you know, work alongside some really incredible directors and just watching how they worked and how they operate and, you know, witnessing the well-oiled machine of a film set for as many years as I did, you know, that all played into um, being able to take this next step on in my career. Absolutely. So. Let's get back to the film. Let's get back to the blazing world because this is what we're here for. And this is awesome. I did have to bring up that other stuff as well. You, <laughs> yes. you, you have to, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> takeaways people are going to be able to watch this october 15th in theaters um when people watch this film because there is a lot going on it's a psychological game there's a lot thrown in there um what are you hoping they get out of it when they watch a the movie carlson i don't want to put too many expectations um it's obviously very open to interpretation if nothing else i hope that it makes people think um i want to make films that um stand the test of time and are creatively inspiring for people, uh, no matter what they take from it. But it obviously is a film that deals with mental health and family dynamics. And it, it required me taking a hard look at a lot of my own trauma and depression, where it came from. And um, I hope that people just can sort of maybe take away that there's just so much to learn on the other side of what, of what frightens us yeah. and, and that there is so much kindness and compassion that that we can give ourselves um when we release shame yeah but i i feel like it's interesting there's always going to be when you wrap a project there's always going to be different kind of mindsets and emotions going on and it sounds mm -hmm. like because this is a, a heavy film there's a lot going on with your character as well um was the mindset very emotional in terms of like needing kind of a break and everything or was was your mindset like let's direct another movie let's go into it like I, I guess it depends on the project but I'm curious for this one what it was when you wrapped it I mean it's it's sort of just my personality it's just like charge yeah just like battle cry <laughs> like onto the field of like the next one but I'll be honest I needed like I needed a hard hibernation after this one <laughs> but it depends on the project though right Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And like, for, you know, for, for my next couple of things, like, you know, I didn't write it from the ground up. I've been participating in rewrites and, and sort of this sort of thing. So I'm, I'm finding that there are healthy boundaries to be had and it just wasn't with this one. Oh, <laughs> this one sure. was a whole body experience. Yeah. Absolutely. Carlson, thank you so much for coming on Pop Turn to the chat about the blazing world. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. This was a great time. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So yeah, October 15th, it's going to have a theatrical release. That's that's amazing. Congratulations on that. And where can people follow you on social media to keep up to date with everything? Yeah, I'm um, I'm just at Carlson Young on Instagram and Twitter. And I just got a TikTok and I'm on um, I'm on Berries and Cream TikTok. No, actually, I'm on <laughs> Outside TikTok. So Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well seriously congrats on the film i really enjoyed it everyone's going to be able to see it and thank you very much for your time thank you i appreciate it this has been pop turn at youtube.com slash pop turn for previous episodes until next time this is carlson young from the blazing world available october 15th in theaters and pd beats signing off thank you for tuning in to pop turnative make sure to check out our past episodes of pop turnative on youtube be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.